Hi, my name is Anuradha Karupia. I am an engineer at NVIDIA. And today, I'm going to walk you through the various packet flows in the network with eVPN Multiformy. The sample topology that I'm going to use for this discussion is a two-level clause. It has two racks in it, rack one and rack two. Each rack has two top of rack switches. These top of rack switches are at the L2, L3 boundary. They are eVPN PEs and function as VTIPs to extend the L2 domain from rack one to rack two. The servers on these racks, host 11 and host 21, are multi-home to the top of rack switches. Let's take a look at traffic from rack 1 to rack 2. This is bridge traffic, bridge via VLAN 100. VLAN 100 is mapped to VNI 10 100. Each of the EVPN piece has a ES mapping table. The ES mapping table is, of course, populated using the type 1 route, the Ethernet auto discovery route. The CS mapping table identifies the destination VTIPs associated with each Ethernet segment. Then you have the MAC table. The MAC table is populated using the type 2 route, MAC IP route, and it identifies a destination ES. Now let's take a look at a flow from host 11. This flow is being bridged via VLAN 100. When TOR11 receives the flow, it does a MAC lookup. The MAC lookup identifies the destination as Ethernet segment 21. Ethernet segment 21 is, of course, attached to two VTEPs, so a load balancing decision is needed between TAR21 and TAR22. So the ingress VTEP has to do two levels of load balancing. The first level of load balancing is via a MAC lookup, the MAC ECMP, which picks a specific remote VTEP. Once that load balancing decision is made, let's say TAR21 has been picked as a result of that load balancing decision, the packet is going to be VXLAN encapsulated with that DIP 360013. And a second level of ECMP is needed. This is via LPM in the underlay verb, the default verb, and identifies a spine switch for forwarding the VXLAN encapsulated traffic. In this case, spine 1 has been identified as that destination, and the traffic is now being forwarded to host 21. We are TOR11, spine 1, and TOR21. Let's say host 11 wants to send a second flow to host 21. And this flow is, again, via VLAN 100, so it's very similar to the first flow. The only difference is in the UDP destination port information. When this flow is received on TOR11, the same two lookups happen, MAC ECMP and underlay LPM. The MAC ECMP lookup this time resulted in a load balancing decision towards TAR 22. So the packet has been encapsulated with 360014. This VXLAN encapsulated traffic is then subject to a second level of ECMP via the LPM and the underlay verb. This lookup resulted in spine 1 as the destination. So you can see the second flow being forwarded via TAR 11, spine 1, and TAR 22. That is MAC ECMP. MAC ECMP is a new data plane construct that was introduced for the express purpose of eVPN multi-homing. Before this, a MAC entry always identified a single destination. This could be a local access port or a remote beta, but it was always a single destination. But with multi-homing, there is a need to do two levels of load balancing, one via the MAC ECMP. Gauss traffic, bridge traffic from one rack to another rack. How does traffic get bridged within a rack? Let's take a closer look at rack one. Let's take a look at traffic from one server to another server within a rack, host 11 to host 12 in this case. This is again bridge traffic, bridged via VLAN 100. The EVPN PEs, if you remember, have an ES mapping table. The ES mapping table is populated using the Ethernet auto discovery routes. The PEs know that the Ethernet segment is locally attached and maintain a mapping to the access port. So in this case, ES11 and ES12 are locally attached on both TOR11 and TOR12, and this is via bond 11 and bond 12. Then you have the MAC table. The MAC table is populated using the type 2 route, the MAC IP route. The MAC IP route is also used for synchronization. So if you remember in MLAG, database synchronization was central to that implementation. In multi-homing also, you have uh, synchronization of uh, forwarding databases, and that's done via the beloved type 2 route. So for example, if host 11 only sends traffic to TAR11, it never sends traffic to TAR12. TAR12 still ends up populating host 11's MAC address, and this is because of the type 2 route that it received from TAR11. Let's take a look at the traffic flow. This traffic flow is from host 11 to host 12 via VLAN 100. 
when tar 11 receives the traffic it does a mac lookup and identifies the destination as ethernet segment 12. it also knows that the ethernet segment 12 is a locally attached ethernet segment so it is going to forward the traffic access to access that is from bond 11 to bond 12. traffic to a local es is always forwarded access to access next let's look at traffic to a single attached host within the same rack this is the same topology, except I've thrown in a new host, host 13, that is single attached to TAR 12. There's no Ethernet segment here. It's a simple single connected host. And we're going to look at bridge traffic via VLAN 100. You remember the ES mapping table and the MAC table. We're going to look at it from the perspective of TAR 11. We have a traffic flow from host 11 to host 13. When this traffic flow is received by TAR 11, it's going to do a MAC lookup. There is an entry in the MAC table that identifies the destination as TAR 12. So TAR 11 is going to be XLAN and encapsulate the traffic and forward it to TAR 12. TAR 12 then decapsulates and sends the traffic to host 13. And that's how traffic is forwarded to single attached hosts. Even though the server is within the same rack, traffic is going to be forwarded via the VXLAN overlay. That's bridge traffic within a rack and from one rack to another rack. Routed traffic follows a similar trajectory, that's an asymmetric IRB topology, and requires two levels of ECMP on the ingress feeder. The first level is via LPM in the TAN network and identifies a remote VTIP attached to that destination Ethernet segment. Once the packet is encapsulated using that destination VTIP IP address, a second level of ECMP is required, and that's via LPM in the underlay verb, which is the default verb. And that identifies the spine switch to forward the traffic to. So that's routed traffic. Routed traffic and bridge traffic, unicast traffic in a network with EVP and multi-homing.